Hey guys, welcome to Precision Machine Shed. Today, uh, I got this South Bend Heavy 10 that was on my garage, tore apart, and we gotta fix a few things on it. So today I'm gonna fix the hand wheel pinion shaft on the apron assembly. So let me show you how I'm gonna go about doing that. All right, so here's the apron off of that lathe. <clears throat> and this one had quite a bit of wear on it. It's pretty typical for these things to get a lot of wear on the main hand wheel pinion and then the actual pinion shaft here uh, they get walled out and then you get that clunking and uh, it's not as tight as like a nice one should be so let me show you what I'm gonna do all right here's the hand wheel shaft off of that lathe <clears throat> and I was thinking that the apron was actually gonna have some wear which it does uh, I actually found a, a good used apron off of eBay for pretty cheap but this guy right here, if you can see right back here, this has about two thousands overall wear um, on this guy. So I got about a thousands on each side. So what I'm going to do with this is <clears throat> I'm going to cut probably maybe down to about fifteen thousands or twenty thousands or so, just right where we're in here. <clears throat> and then we're going to thread it, and then I'm going to actually get some. I don't have a fancy spray weld set up like a bomb, but. Uh, I'm going to use some Devcon 10110 putty and we'll see how that works out. Um, it's That stuff is meant for machining and uh, it's machinable and it's pretty high quality stuff so um, JB Weld makes a similar product for this specific application so we're going to give it a shot and see how it works. So next thing what we're going to do is we're going to set up and we're going to just put some little fine threads on this guy to give that uh, DevCon something to grab onto. Alright, we're going to do 44 threads per inch for no other reason that's how, then that's what my lathe is set up, so let's get rolling. Well, I must admit that's not... Pretty fine thread. It didn't cut the greatest because it had my uh, thing locked down, but <clears throat> that gives it a nice rough finish. I probably went in a little deeper than I needed to, but that gives it a nice rough finish to stick to. So now we clean it off really well and put some DevCon on there. All right, so here's the putty. Here's the DevCon, <clears throat> and this is a 2.5 to 1 mixture. And I've always just kind of guessed on it, and that this stuff's kind of old, so hopefully it still works. hardener. There's a hardener. White goopy stuff. And it should be pretty well mixed up. I think I might try and put a little tape around this gear here. We our putty, and I got an actual putty knife. Then I'm gonna crank my lathe on the slowest speed here. That's better. So the trick here is to press that putty in there and try not getting any air bubbles in it. <clears throat> Last time I bought this DevCon, I think it was 40 or 50 bucks for that one pound thing. So it's not cheap, but it works really well. And this is actually the first time I've ever used it doing this type of work, but this is more so what it 
more or less what it was designed for. <clears throat> and then a lot of guys picked it up and ended up using it with gun stocks for bedding material. There's not much to it, so now I gotta let it sit for at least an hour and uh, I might leave my lathe actually run for probably 15 minutes. So I'm just probably gonna leave it sit for about a day and then I'll come back and we'll finish this off here. All right, so this guy's set up overnight and now what we're gonna do <clears throat> is just hog all this material off and I gotta get down to 560 thousands. And I'm just running between centers here with the drive dog. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how they originally turned these shafts was between centers. Uh, there's centers cut in these already and I measure it and it's less than a half a thousandths run out right here so <clears throat> I'm okay with that so we're just gonna start cutting here and, and uh, get down to our dimensions <laughs> All right, <clears throat> after a bunch of messing around, I got my tailstock lined up and we'll attempt to make the final cut here. If I... <clears throat> I'm gonna have to sharpen my bit can't see it here, but that little edge right there, that's wearing that high speed steel off, so let me go sharpen this guy. All right, so here it is all finished up, and I did make the mistake of undercutting this by about a thousandths. Uh, I made this mistake. I had this uh, my apron upstairs, and I went and checked it when I was at about 11, 10 and a half thousandths, or sorry, one to one and a half thousandths over, <clears throat> and it was still tight, so I just hogged a thousandths or thousandths and a half off there and ended up being about a thousandths over. So anyways, uh, let's stick in there and check it out. This is a different apron that I picked up. The apron that I had, if you can see these little felt markers here, where the felt inlets are, those are pretty much completely gone on the other apron on both these two shafts. So here's my, my shaft for this guy. And I have just a, uh, the apron's moving too, but just a tiny bit of wobble here. And here's a hand wheel. And goes over that. So I can't really. I got just a tiny bit of wobble. Maybe three, four, five thousandths. I don't know, maybe a little more. I don't. Once I get the pin in there, that'll help a little bit too. But before I could whack, this thing would go up like one or two hundred. It's probably a couple hundred thousands. Uh, it was, you know, good. 3 16ths of an inch that this thing would wobble so uh, I'm happy with this it's a hell of a lot better than it was um, and this is more or less a temporary fix until I can find a replacement uh, shaft for this guy but uh, this should work pretty good 
So a few of the issues I ran across when doing this that I noticed were um, everything worked out pretty good except for when I went to cut this with a high speed steel bit. I noticed that I would start on this side and I'd get to about here and that would this compound would wear that high speed steel away. Uh, I have some carbide, I guess I could have tried it but I didn't even think about it. Well I thought about it but I didn't want to switch over my tooling so. <clears throat> um, and then I was also, as I was cutting that, before I figured out that it was eating away the high speed steel, I actually thought my tailstock was off, which I don't know why I was second guessing myself because I set that thing uh, a few months back and it should have been right on, but I ended up messing with it and so now I got to reset it, but uh, before I figured out that that was the issue, but so my tailstock was on, it was just my bit was, as I was cutting this, was wearing away. So this is some pretty tough stuff. Um, I'm not sure, um, I think if this thing stays oiled like it's supposed to be, which it wasn't originally, it should not be an issue, but like I said, I'll probably replace it with the uh, replacement shaft when I can find one. So there we go, there's kind of fixing a shaft. Um, this would work really good if you were setting this in like a uh, roller bearing. Uh, this would work great, I think, and a few other applications. But there we go, there's a quick fix, not really quick, but there's a fix on a shaft with some DevCon putty. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you liked that, please be sure to like, comment below, and be sure to check out my channel and all my other videos. Till next time, stay safe on your machines and shoot safe. I'll see you next time, thanks for watching.